Hello and welcome to a new year and new episode of Bengal Magazine. My name is Jeff Ventura. On today's show, we're going to catch up with some of our winter teams having very successful seasons. We'll talk first with men's hockey head coach Steve Murphy and junior goalie from Pauling, New York, Mike D. Laverne. In our second segment, we'll talk women's hockey with head coach Candace Moxley and her sophomore forward from Penticton, British Columbia, Brooke Krantz. In the final segment, we'll dive into the pool with head coach Nick Stone and sophomore sprinting sensation from East Amherst, New York, Connor Mergler. After a short break, we're going to talk men's hockey with head coach Steve Murphy. back to Bengal Magazine. Our first segment today, we're talking men's hockey with first year head coach Steve Murphy and junior goalie from Pauling, New York, Mike DeLaverne. Gentlemen, welcome to the show. Middle of the SUNYAC standings right now, 9-6-4 and four overall, 5-4-1 and one in SUNYAC play. Six games remaining, home and home with Morrisville this weekend. Uh, it's tough to evaluate the standings a little bit because of the imbalance schedule after this weekend. We'll, we'll catch up on those games at hand. Uh, Talk about the season so far. Is this where you envision, and, and how is the team performing? Yeah, I, I think with going into six games left, I think we're in a good spot. Um, like you said, we do have some games in hand, which is nice as, as long as we win those games. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously, unless you go undefeated in, in, in you know in any season, you're always going to wish you had you know maybe one or two games that uh, you know, they had back. Wish you would have won. Um, but I think we're playing our best hockey right now, and um, really from the beginning of the year. When we started out 0-2-2, two two, um, you know, maybe some indirect or indirect results as far as us just changing everything from stuff they've done the past few years. Um, but since those first two weekends, 9-4-2, uh, we believe we're playing some of our best hockey right now. And, and this is when you want to be playing it is heading into the, to the stretch and, and into playoffs. So we like where we're at. Um, I think if we can continue to take care of business, um, you know, our goal is to, to get a home playoff game and in that first round or even maybe a bye. Um, and then go from there and just kind of see where the chips fall. One of the strengths of the team sitting next to you, Mike, uh, a 2.25 goals against average and leading the conference with a 9.29 save percentage. And doing that by facing the second most shots in the league as well. You, the, the workload almost every minute besides 90 minutes this season, you've been between the pipes. Uh, talk about your season a little bit and, and what it's like to have that kind of workload as a goalie. Um, well, starting with the workload, for me as a goalie, the more games I play and the more shots I see, the more comfortable I feel. So it's more of like a confidence thing. And once you start stopping a couple pucks, you just want to keep stopping them and keep going. And then the team, I think our defense is playing great this year. And it's just that's another thing to help with those stats and leading the conference and stuff like you said. And if we keep up that defense, defense I think will win championships. Really playing a, a team defense style, and, and, and that, some of that could be evident. Uh, leading the conference in penalty kill, which I, I mentioned to you before, and you said we are, uh, almost 87% killing penalties, and we've actually had to kill the most power plays in the league. We don't, we're in the middle of the pack in penalties, but our penalties all seem to put us shorthanded. Um, talk about that, that team defensive concert, concept, and especially the, the success killing penalties. I think that's one of the things that I probably mentioned right away into the season. I, I laid it out. Um, you know, me and my assistant laid it out very clear that we were going to be better defensively. Um, and in order to do that, our goal was to give up two or less goals a game. And, and if you do that, you're always going to give yourselves a chance to win. Are you always going to win every game? No, but we're giving ourselves a chance. And I, I think even since um, after Christmas break, there's maybe one game where we've only given up, you know, more than two. Um, you just set yourself up for a recipe for success. And um, it's, it's definitely one of the things that we wanted to focus on um, to be better at this year than, than we were last year. I think we're doing that, um, and I think it shows in, in our record. Mike, Mike, your play has obviously been very strong, but talk about what's happened in front of you that, that may be impacting your success between the players. Um, I think a lot of it is everyone just buying in. and When we do the simple things like block shots, chip pucks out, it makes it a lot easier to play in front of, and that's what we've been doing, and that's why we've been having success. And that's one of the things I've noticed. In the past, there were a few guys willing to sell out the block shots, and it, it seems like it's, it's all 18 in the lineup now are, are selling out the block shots. I assume that's something that, that, that you've preached from day one? Yeah, I think so. I mean, it's, um, I, I think, 
at least as far as I, as far as I, I believe, I think I've been, you know, pretty black and white with most guys, and, and they see that um, when they're doing those little things, uh, their ice time may increase a little bit, um, or they may be out there in the final minute or two of a game when when it's important and the game's on the line. Um, if they're not doing those little things, then maybe their, you know, their ice time gets um, downgraded a little bit. No matter how many points we're putting up on the offensive side, um, like I said, we've tried to say that you know we got to take care of our end first, um, and. You've seen the progress from, I would even say, the first day up until now. Um, you're right, everybody's buying in, and it's good to see, and um, it's led to more wins, I believe. The program has established itself now as, as one of the competitors in the SUNYAC. Uh, I believe it's three straight SUNYAC semifinal appearances. Um, this year, we've seen some really strong results, though, against some tough teams. A tie against uh, St. Norbert, number two in the country. Uh, win over Geneseo, currently number 11 in the country. One nothing loss this past weekend to Plattsburgh, who's number three in the country. A win over nationally ranked Utica. A tie over Elmira, who is receiving votes in the national poll. What do those results tell you about perhaps the potential of this team uh, heading into the postseason? Well, it gives us, you know, the expectations, I think, that we've had from the beginning. And, and we've said, you know, win, lose, tie, whether it's, you know, our tie against Norbert or our recent loss against Plattsburgh. You know, first things first is, is we're not going to be, you know, like, we're not content anymore unless we win and unless we, unless we beat St. Norbert, unless we beat Plattsburgh. Um, and you can kind of see it in the, in the locker room now. And, um, you know, even the tie against Elmire, I remember going in there and guys were, they were down a little bit and it's like, we just played a great game against a great hockey team. We tied them. We'll get there. We'll get there to, to kind of where those teams are at. And um, it's just building that kind of building block and, and progress from the beginning of the year to the end of the year. Um, our, our expectations always been, we're getting into the playoffs. So that's, there's no question about that. I think, you know, that's, that's our expectation from day one is there's no, okay, well, you know, step one, let's make the playoffs. No, we're in the playoffs from the beginning of the year. That's the expectation. That's what we're going after. It's let's get a number one seed. Let's get a number two seed and get a bye. And that's that's what I believe I've, I've held, you know, these guys maybe to a higher standard and been a little bit more demanding of them. And, and, and they've responded to being pushed like that um, where now you're seeing results of being able to play against and, and with um, some of the best teams in the country. And I, and I think that push is being echoed in the players. I talked to Mike off camera and said, you know, a nice effort and one nothing loss to Plattsburgh. He said, well, it wasn't good enough. So, so obviously the expectation is there. Uh, next game this Friday night at home, Friday, February 5th against Morrisville, the first half of a home and home, gentlemen. Good luck there in the final six games of the regular season. And hopefully we're going to see a, a home playoff game once again in the ice arena uh, in late February. That'll do it for our first segment. When we come back, we're going to talk women's hockey with head coach Candace Moxley. I want to point out our Tim Hortons Buffalo State Athlete of the Week, women's hockey player Justine Silva. Sophomore forensic chemistry major conceded just one goal with a .982 save percentage and two wins over Oswego last weekend. She made 27 stops and a 3-1 win on Friday and then stopped all 27 shots she faced. In Saturday's 2-0 victory, the shutout, her fourth of the season, tying a school single season record. Justine Silva, your Tim Hortons Buffalo State Athlete of the Week. And we're joined talking women's hockey with head coach Candace Moxley and sophomore forward Brooke Krantz. Ladies, welcome to the show. Um, Justine having great success, the team having great success as well. Uh, shattering school records, 15-4, and 9-3 and three in ECAC West play. Already a school record in wins in a season by four already. And you control your own destiny to really make history to, to host a playoff game for the first time in, in school history. I know that's one of the goals at the outset. I want to rewind a little bit, just your third season with the program and kind of inherited the team your first year that finished 3-21-3. Um, no place to go but up from there, but just a year and a half later from finishing that season and, like I said, 15-4. and four, is, right. this, is this the plan? Or are we a little bit ahead of plan? And, and how have, has the program really turned around? Uh, you know, I think we're, we're a little bit ahead of schedule. Um, uh, with those, with the core group that I had, that I inherited with the program, um, they're a great group of leaders in that bunch there. Um, and then with the addition of uh, our freshman class last year, who are now sophomores, we've seen a lot of growth in those players just in themselves and their development. Uh, so on the ice, it's really, we are writing our own destiny. Um, we will go as far as our locker room wants to go and those players in that locker room, which is exciting because 
it's just we've had a number of players step up. It's not just coming from one individual where that's kind of been the trend in the past where we have now a team that can produce three lines that can produce and it's really exciting to kind of see what they're doing. Interesting conversations this past week at Alumni Weekend for the men's and women's programs and a lot of former players came back and people were asking me about the women's team and it was interesting what you just said. In the past it was one, two, three players that we looked to that if they were going, we could go. If they weren't, we were in trouble. And right. that's the way I described the program to kids who asked this weekend was scoring comes from everywhere. And, and one of your scorers sitting next to you with four goals and 11 assists this season, 15 points, third on the team. Brooke, you're a sophomore. You committed to this program after a, a three and 20 season. Where did you, where were your expectations for the program and, and how quickly has the turnaround happened for you? Um, well, when Mox recruited me, I had full confidence in her that she would turn the program around, and I was really looking forward to being a part of that and starting new traditions and um, uh, just like everything that Mox has like set out for us. I believe that we're only going to get better, and I'm really looking forward to that. We mentioned the scoring, and the scoring has come from when I when I type up the stats for the game program. We go pretty deep with mentioning, right? You know players who have posted some significant points. Uh, our athlete of the week, Justine Silva, has also been quite a pleasant surprise. A fine rookie season last year, uh, but this year a 951 save percentage that ranks fourth in the country right now. Mm -hmm. uh, talk about what she's given you in the back end and, and how that's it enabled you to play maybe a little bit more open style of play. Right. Um, well, even when we were in the recruiting process, it, I, like our vision was to start from the back end out um, so that we can have a strong goaltender and then we can build a team on top of that. And throughout the recruiting process, she was number one on our list. And we were excited when she committed because she has that big time save capability. She can steal games. And that's exactly what we were looking for um, to help push us forward. And she's been, she's been that. And her game, like he had said, it, she's been able to step it up even more because everybody's bought into the vision of this team and where we're going. Uh, so it's it's pretty great to see her able to step her game to that level. Brooke, talk to you from a player's perspective. Coach mentions the vision of the team. Uh, what is the identity of this team, and, and how have you been so successful this season? Um, I think our team just works really hard, and uh, I think we buy into the systems that Mox has laid out for us, and we buy into each other. So knowing that you can trust the person you're playing beside and playing for them. One of the things that has impressed me with the past weekend against Oswego, uh, especially the first game. Maybe the middle 20 minutes wasn't our best 20 minutes of the season, and I think you head into the locker room, at least I did, thinking, uh-oh, what's going to come out in the third period? And then the team has, was able to bounce back, and they've been able to bounce back against adversity, if you call it that, all season. Um, talk a little bit about the character, and I assume that comes back to the leadership that you're talking about as well. Right, and, and Oswego, a lot of our girls, when we did uh, – our, our team goals at the beginning of the year. Being in Oswego was one of those goals that was mentioned. And there's a lot of passion in our room. And we knew that that second period, we, we needed to cut it off and just forget about it completely because we had, we had started the game off so well um, and we needed to get back to playing that way in the third. So uh, it helped. We had a pretty tough week of practice and we worked, we worked the girls pretty hard that week in practice. So. I feel like we were ready to dig a little bit deeper to get the job done, and that's pretty much what we revisited um, in between those two periods was not good enough. Now we have to dig deeper, and, and someone has to step up in our locker room, and we definitely had that. And, and the team responded with 80 solid minutes after that, the game on, on right. Saturday as well at both ends of the ice. Um, Brooke, talk about your role a little bit as a sophomore, um, but part of that leadership group now, I think, um, do you take that responsibility or is it kind of a, a shared effort among everybody? Um, I think this year it's been more of a shared effort. Um, I do think that I'm starting to step up more and really come into being uh, maybe like a leader on the team. But I think, I mean, everyone has stepped up this year and there hasn't really been like someone who we rely on. I mean, everyone has really chipped in and even if you're not scoring, you know you're blocking shots or doing whatever it takes to. A, a solid start. We're late in the season. It's, it's right. still 15 and four overall, nine and three in ECAC West play. 
just less than a minute left, but talk about this weekend presents a new challenge. Uh, the number three ranked team in the country, Elmira, home and home. Uh, played them very tight one game last year, and, and the other game got away just a little bit. Um, but it's a team coming off a couple tough defeats. Um, kind of handicapped this weekend, and, and your goal is heading into a real barometer check for you. Right, and, and Oswego was, was one of those benchmarks, and now Elmira's at that other benchmark where they're a top team in our conference, and in order to uh, to win and get to where we want to be as a program, these these games are really important for us. So it's a matter of us coaching staff, watching film, preparing our players so that they know what to expect when they get in, get in, uh, onto the ice with them, and uh, just really being at our best and come mainly us peaking when we when we get into the weekend there. Again, 15 and 4 overall, a home and home series with Elmira this weekend. Six games remain in the regular season and, and heading toward toward playoffs in, in good position. Ladies, thank you and good luck this weekend. When we come back in our final segment, we'll talk with head swimming and diving coach Nick Stone and look at SUNYAC championships and championship season for swimming and diving. Welcome to Bengal Update. I'm Rebecca Coleman here with the recap of news and a look at the upcoming events surrounding Buffalo State Athletics. Women's hockey has won seven of its last eight games. The Bengals are 15-4 overall and 9-3 in the ECAC West. The women are off to their best start in program history and have already broke the school record for wins that previously stood at 11, set in the 2000-2001 season. Aaron Guillen leads the team with 22 points and is currently leading the country with a school record five shorthanded goals. Goalkeeper Justine Silva ranks fourth in the nation with a .951 save percentage. The Bengals return to action this Friday, February 5th at home for a 4 p.m. conference matchup against Elmira. Men's hockey is 9-6-4 overall and 5-4-1 in the SUNYAC. The Bengals are coming off a 1-1 weekend in which they defeated Potsdam 6-1 Friday night and then fell 1-0 to nationally ranked Plattsburgh. Taylor Price is currently leading the Buffalo State offense with 18 points. Mike D. Laverne has made 522 saves so far this season and has a .929 save percentage. Buffalo State returns to action this Friday, February 5th at home for a 7 p.m. conference matchup against Morrisville State. Swimming and diving competed in a home dual meet against Brockport January 23rd. The Bengals came up big on senior day and both the men and women took first place. Connor Mergler, who also was recognized as SUNYAC Swimmer of the Week, led the Bengal men with four top place finishes. Allison Kolzinski led the Bengal women, also tabbing four place finishes. The Bengals returned to action on Saturday, February 6th at Geneseo for their final meet before the SUNYAC Championships. Men's basketball is currently 12-7 overall and 6-6 six and six in the SUNYAC. The Bengals are coming off a 1-1 conference weekend. On Friday night, Buffalo State suffered a heartbreaker, falling to Plattsburgh 94-92 in the final seconds of the game. The Bengals, however, bounced back the following night and raced past Potsdam 105-61. Michael Henry and Lavelle Smith are leading the Bengal offense, averaging 15.1 points per game each. Buffalo State hits the road this weekend for a conference doubleheader. The Bengals head to Cortland on Friday and Oswego on Saturday. Women's basketball is currently 7-12 overall and 3-9 in the conference. The Bengals snapped a seven-game losing streak this past Saturday with a 70-40 win over Potsdam. Keontae Edwards, the SUNYAC Basketball Player of the Week, led the Bengals in the win with her seventh career double-double pulling down a career-best 18 rebounds and adding 16 points. Buffalo State hits the road this weekend for a conference doubleheader. The Bengals head to Cortland on Friday and Oswego on Saturday. Track and field opened the 2016 indoor season on January 22nd at the Youngstown State mid-January meet. The Bengals finished the meet against Division I and Division II competition with seven top 10 finishes. Treasure Glimp led the way for the women with a fourth place finish in the triple jump. Corey Cox and Jamie Mullins were the top Bengal finishers on the men's side with third place finishes in the 200 meter dash and in the high jump respectively. 
Buffalo State returns to action on Saturday, February 6th at Mountain Union. Reporting for Buffalo State Athletics, I'm Rebecca Coleman. And now back to Jeff with more Bengo Magazine. Thank you, Rebecca. In our final segment today, we're talking swimming and diving with first-year head coach Nick Stone and sophomore sensation Connor Mergler. Uh, gentlemen, welcome to the show. Late in the season, we're heading into championship season. Uh, one meet remaining against Geneseo. Um, a lot of strong showings this year uh, on an individual and a team perspective. Despite small numbers, we've piled up a couple of wins against some, some pretty established programs. Um, kind of assess the season in your, in your first year so far. Yeah, the season's going really well. The teams responded to the training really well, especially in the weight room. They put on a lot of strength factors um, and it's transferring over to the pool. Uh, and the team this year has done a really good job with becoming a stronger team as a whole, um, which has helped us kind of get motivated and to beat those teams like Brockport um, was going to be a close meet for us anyhow and, and we were able to squeak out, squeak out those wins on both sides so um, I've been really excited I'm excited to go into Geneseo invite with to kind of see check where they are and taper has kind of started this week so we'll see how they're responding to that a little bit and make some tweaks along the way. I want to come back to that taper idea in a minute but Backing up in your schedule, we've had three dual meets since returning from Florida, mm -hmm. but I want to talk a little bit about the, the Florida training trip and, mm -hmm. and why is that so important? Uh, I think a lot of people sometimes wonder, well, you're, you're swimming in a pool. Yeah. What, what is the value of that trip to Florida? With the yeah, it's, a lot of it's kind of like a mental break from being home um, where you can get away nicer weather. We train outside. Um, we get some really good quality training. We can do dry land, more options, but also we swim long course. So we'll do 50 meters in the mornings, um, which is a really big aerobic builder uh, because they're swimming and there's not many turns, so we get rest. And so it's, it's a really good way to train your aerobic system and kind of challenge your body a little bit more. And then um, the teams together as a whole during the school year, are, we have different practice schedules where we only have two in Florida. So everyone's together and it's a really good team building uh, aspect of it. I want to talk about the student athlete next to you a little bit. We'll start with, with you, Connor. Uh, to introduce you to the audience, this is your first time on the show. A sophomore, four school records, the 50, 100, and 200 free, and the 100 fly. Uh, of course, your sister, Caitlin, who graduated in 2013, has parts of eight school records. Um, so I'll let you guys argue that at home. Um, but a two-time SUNYAC champion in your freshman season in the 50 and 100 free. Uh, first men's swimmer in Buffalo State in more than 20 years to win a SUNYAC championship. Um, Talk first about, about that rookie season. Did it meet expectations or, or did you not have, know what your expectations were heading into that first year? I blew completely out of my expectations. I would never expected me winning SUNYACs my first year, freshman year. I was thinking maybe top five, but I, would, I never thought of winning at all in my two events. So now how does your sophomore year change? Those, those expectations, not just from you, but from coach and, and from the conference, they're looking at you now as a favorite in, in those sprint free events. Uh, does that change your preparation at all in your mindset? Um, yeah, totally. After winning two championships in my freshman year, they're all, everyone else is thinking, oh, he's coming back even stronger. And that's absolutely what I'm doing, lifting more, working harder in the pool. So I'm just bringing it all together to defend all my titles. Now, Nick, this is your, your first year working with Connor, but obviously you have times from last year, and, mm -hmm. and I know you feel very optimistic about his potential this year to go beyond SUNYACs. Mm -hmm. uh, talk about his, his development throughout this season. Um, well, going based off of last year's times and performances, he's really ahead of the game where he was last year. His best 50 free time was a 21.5 going into SUNYACs. He's already been 21.1, um, including that after the 100 backstroke, which was only like a 10-minute turnaround. So he's definitely there training-wise. We've got a, just a little over a minute left. Want to look at SUNYACs. Mm -hmm. We'll skip past Geneseo if you yeah. don't mind. Um, what are you envisioning? What, are you, what would make a successful meet for Buffalo State Swimming and Diving? Yeah, I think just moving up in places. So our relays look pretty strong, especially our sprint relays are looking really good to move up within the conference on the men's side. A few of our women's relays are um, looking really good to maybe get some school records on both sides. Um, a successful meet for us, I, was, I would hope, to at least score some more points because we're making that jump, but the jump to fourth place is a really big point jump, which is this, the, with the numbers we have right now may not be possible, but getting more guys to score in their second and third events and moving our relays up will help us bridge that gap. So looking to score more points than we have in years past and um, get some best times and 
see where that takes us. Well, we're excited to watch again February 17th through 21st, SUNY Championships at ECC's uh, Burt Flickinger Aquatic Center. Uh, looking for Connor Mergler to defend his title in the 1500 free and, and improve your fourth place finish in the 200 free, which is probably more where you expected to be last year. Um, gentlemen, both of you, best of luck at SUNYACs and, and hopefully beyond. That'll do it for this edition of Bengal Magazine. We'll see you for more in two weeks.